Hello, this is Piero San Giorgio. Today, I would like to talk to you about Turkey in the context of uh, economic collapse. Now, as you know, I'm the author of the book Survive the Economic Collapse, and other books not yet translated in English at this point. But suddenly, my thesis is that we are the convergence of major um, catastrophes, financial, uh, ecological, uh, demographic, and of course this will lead to the economic collapse and um, this is going to be worldwide. Now, as I'm in Turkey these next last few days and next few days, I'm here in a small uh, fishing uh, resort uh, village uh, next, to, uh, next to the uh, Mediterranean Sea in the south of Turkey. And um, I thought to, to, to tell you a little bit, as I do whenever I travel for my business or, uh, or for pleasure, in this case it's, uh, it's both business and always pleasure, uh, I want to talk to you about what I think is going to happen in Turkey during the economic collapse. And of course, as m if any of you is a publisher in Turkish or uh, has, a, has contacts in, uh, in uh, publishers in Turkey, I would be very happy to have my books published, of course, in Turkey. So I've been, um, as many kids in the West, when I was a kid, of course, Turkey was a faraway land, almost mythological, because obviously uh, the, it was the Orient, uh, the Turkish uh, uh, foods and delights, and of course in history, as I'm passionate about history, I knew a lot about, of course, the Ottoman Empire, of course about, uh, especially during World War I, starting in fact for Turkey in 1911 with the Italian invasion of Libya and the islands here in, in uh, not too far from here, uh, the Dodecanese Dodic Islands. And um, up to World War I, and uh, where, of course, uh, Gallipoli and in the Middle East and Iraq in, the, in Baghdad, there was all these fighting and very interesting history. So I knew a little bit about the Ottoman Empire. And of course, when uh, Mustafa Kemal, the hero of uh, the Dardanelles of Gallipoli, uh, during the, the, the war ended up in 21, kicking out uh, NATO <laughs> of the time, well, the, the Allies, the Entente, uh, out of Smyrna. Izmir. Well, uh, of course, he founded modern Turkey, uh, and he's known today as Atatürk. So this was known to me, and uh, I only came to Turkey for business much, much later when I was uh, developing emerging markets for software industries in, in, in the U.S. Well, this, this is one of them, this one. <laughs> and anyway, I had lots of pleasure working with my colleagues here in Turkey, and I discovered, of course, Istanbul, fantastic city, and, uh, but also some other cities like Ankara, Bodrum, Antalya, uh, Konya, uh, Izmir, and I've not been to the to the east. I've not been to that uh, that part. But certainly, it's a, it's a big country. It's a very great country. Uh, it has a lot of resources. So, what's interesting to see when you talk about an economic collapse is what is going to be the impact. First of all, the impact in Turkey is going to be just as big as anywhere else. Is because when the global economy collapses, of course, Turkey is very much linked on uh, export industry very high quality and very good quality export industry today in Turkey, that will suffer. And of course the tourist industry will also suffer. So unfortunately all these places uh, which also live because of tourism will have to revert to very much traditional ways of, of living. We'll talk about that in a moment. So uh, Turkey will be hit. And when, when a country is hit, what the first thing you have to, you have to look at is cohesion. Is, are the Turkish people going to be united? cohesive in their behavior and their action. And now the good thing in Turkey is that Turkish people are very proud to be Turkish. You can ask anyone in the street, from of course older people to younger people, they're very proud to be Turks. Doesn't mean they agree on the politics, as you've seen recently there's been a lot of turmoil in Turkey from more progressive, less progressive, more conservative uh, groups and people and sometimes the clashes can be very violent as it often is in the Mediterranean. Uh, but uh, they are very proud to be Turkish and maybe with some exception of some independentist Kurdish in, uh, in the east part of the, of the, of the, of the country. But certainly uh, most people, even if you, if you take young hipsters in the street with tattoos and, 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 and piercings, they will be happy and proud to be Turkish, which is, which is really something good because it means when, the, when things will be tough, there will be something, some common bond, something that links people together here. 
Another element that you need to look is geography, of course. Now, is the climate is fantastic. Geography is uh, is uh, is very nice, of course. Uh, here, um, uh, it, there's a sea, and many people don't know, but there is a lot of mountains, of course, and very high mountains. So that means a lot of water, actually cold winters, and uh, one of the typical characteristic of Turkish people is based on the geography, as always. Uh, national characters or characters of people are very much linked to their culture, which is very much linked to geography. Uh, a lot of Turkish people are from mountains, mountains area, and mountain people are tough. And Turkish people have the reputation throughout history to be tough. If you ask uh, British uh, soldiers of World War One who were in the Middle Eastern theater, they were telling you that Johnny Turk, as they call them, the soldier of the Ottoman Empire, the Turkish soldiers, they were extremely rough and tough, like in a way like Russians. And, uh, and this strength is a strength of character and also physical strength is an asset. So there's going to be water, there's going to be a lot of land. Of course, land can be, uh, as you can see behind me, sometimes it can be quite arid, but sometimes it can be quite fertile. And in some cases where you have enough water, when you have enough tradition of, of taking care of the ground, of the soil, which is the case still in the rural areas of Turkey, which the tradition is still very strong to take care of gardens, of making great vegetables. The food, by the way, in Turkey is fantastic, not just because of the Turkish cuisine, but actually the old style, the, the grandmother's cuisine, the Ottoman style cuisine, is just one of the best in the world. Anyway, so you have to look at these physical aspects. And for that, Turkey is blessed because it has, sure, it's also on a fault line, so there are risks of earthquakes, but that is not going to be increased during the economic collapse. Certainly, there are the physical aspects of Turkey are good. There are mountains, that means there's, there's water, there's cold winters, so that means there is accumulation of water in snow and glaciers. And of course, there's big rivers and the sea that allows communication. And of course, the area that is covered by Turkey today is very, very good for self-sufficiency. So of course, every individual needs to work on that, as I explained in my books. But the, knowing that the country as a whole has cohesion and in the national character, and also has uh, very good geography. These are big assets. Another important aspect to look then is uh, geopolitics. Now, of course, uh, this country is in the middle of uh, Asia and the gateway to Europe. In fact, if you look at the, the physical look of many most Turkish people, they are very much European. They are, of course, Caucasian, they're white. And uh, even Islam, is a secondary element to the fact that they are Turkish first. And it's very interesting because, of course, it's a, democ it's a democracy. And uh, it's a democracy with a strong army. And that leads to the geopolitics of it, is that the army is still a cement of the Turkish um, society and could be uh, able to, to restore or at least keep order if necessary and if they are smart and if they know what is happening. So I'm available for consulting to the Turkish army, as I do with some armies around the world. Anyways, uh, what is also interesting to, to see in geopolitics is that, now that's the bad part, is that Turkey is at the crossroad of Asia, Russia, and the Middle East. So clearly, this is an area that traditionally are, has always been coveted, that always been fought for between um, you know the empires, whether it was Egypt against the Hittites, whether it was Babylon, whether it was Persia, uh, of course the Byzantine Empire, Russia, this area is at the crossroads. And when the Ottoman Empire was very strong, and it was strong for many centuries, that was because it could control the Balkans on the north, uh, northwest, it could control the Caucasus, it could control even as far as Crimea, and it could control, of course, um, uh, the Middle East. And at some point, it had been overextended, controlling all the way to Egypt and all the way to Arabia. And that was a huge empire, of course, very hard to control, but at least in that empire it was very peaceful and there was no turmoil. So today this empire is not there, and I don't think Turkey has any ambition to do any empire of that sort. Of course, uh, there is some, always a sentiment of what they call pan turanic which means to link with the Turkmen, people who have almost Turkish language, across the Caucasus and across the Caspian Sea to Turkmenistan and other places. But this is maybe a philosophical dream rather than a physical possibility today. At least I, that's what I think. So I don't think there's going to be expansionist policies from Turkey. And even going into uh, the European side, there's no point. The only way to go into Europe for Turkey would be to join the European Union, 
but you have to be crazy to join the European Union these days and actually most Turkish people have understood that they have everything to lose. They'd rather be the, 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 the biggest power in their neighborhood than joining the EU and having to pay a lot of money and having to spend and also losing democracy joining into the EU and becoming part of this big mess that is also anyway going to collapse uh, very brutally. So uh, that, that geopolitic is very important. Now, Turkey is part of NATO. It's probably the biggest. After the United States, it has probably the biggest army and has a very powerful air force and, and navy today. So could Turkey be dragged in the next wars that NATO and, of course, the US are going to declare around the world? Yes and no. It's difficult to say because, for example, during the American invasion, US invasion of Iraq, um, Turkey was very smart and stayed out of it and therefore uh, avoided a big conflict perhaps with Kurdic, Kurdic people living in, uh, in the east, southeast of, of Turkey. Because now, with, which, is, which is obviously independent Kurdistan, uh, there is a country you can deal with. And if Turkey had participated in the invasion of Iraq, it would have created tensions between, uh, between the people and, and, and so they were very smart not to do it. So you have to commend the Turkish government not to do that. Uh, of course, Turkey is in the same area where there is Israeli-Arab conflict. So how can Turkey remain out of that, or at least not to be dragged on one side or the other? One, both sides would be disastrous for uh, support, or any side would be disastrous for Turkey. So you, you have to be very wise, uh, and the Turkish government seems to be very wise, playing a little bit. Uh, it has good relationships with Israel, but also keeps good relationship with the Arab world. So maybe that's very smart, so they have to continue to be very smart. And uh, because there's only one thing that matters, is your own interest. And for Turkish people, the best interest is Turkish people, not others. As for me, Swiss people should come first. And, and likewise for Americans, American people should come first, etc., etc. So, so I hope this keeps working. Another element is, of course, not to be dragged in any wars with Russia. Because I think Russia and Turkey have great potential for collaboration. It's people who get along well in reality, even if it's in history they've had lots of wars. And there is no point that Turkey gets dragged into any NATO war against Russia. So you have to be very careful about this. Uh, NATO, I don't think NATO is peaceful and I don't think NATO is, uh, is a defensive organization. Today it's a puppet of American empire and it's used to make wars. So Turkey should be very careful not to be dragged in wars with big powers like, uh, like Russia. There is much more to gain for Turkey to collaborate with Russia, as they are doing today, and as the collaboration in the Caucasus area starts to be really, really, really good economically. So in case of economic collapse, there are chances that Turkey remains a country and remains a strong nation and united nation. And there is also a strong chance that the Turkish people, because there are still um, so much links to the ground, to the earth, to the traditions, they can manage to keep self-sufficiency in terms of food, in terms of water, of course also in terms of the key energy because Turkey has a lot of hydroelectric power and it has uh, a lot of solar potential, of course with the sun like here, um, you have a lot of potential. Actually most Turkey has its water uh, heated by solar panels which is a great, great advantage. So that's that's important points. In terms of defense, well, in terms of, uh, sorry, in terms of culture, there is still links to the, to the tradition, there are still uh, ability and knowledge about working uh, the ground, but also traditional manufacturers, such as, of course, you will laugh if I say carpets. But anyway, it's just a symbol that if you still have a country where people still know how to make carpets, it means there are still people who know how to make shoes, how to make leather, how to make wooden uh, crafts. And all these things help to build houses, to build, uh, to repair, and mechanics, etc. Also, Turkey is near oil supplies, especially in Kurdistan. So there could be links, there could be um, deals, there could be trade, so that Turkey could keep at least a minimum of oil for a long time, so that it can keep an economy, at least for self-sufficiency, working. And uh, for, as far as defense, Turkey is, of course, a very big military power. So if it doesn't collapse, hopefully it can remain a strong country. And of course, in terms of social links and social bonds, the Turkish people are still very family-oriented, very uh, country-oriented, as I mentioned, but very strong links to their community. And this is also fundamental and very important, as it is everywhere around the Mediterranean. This is a very, very important uh, asset for Mediterranean countries. So 
all in all, uh, and I don't say this often about many countries, I think, uh, of course, uh, the countries I can think of, like Switzerland, Russia, um, and here Turkey, have good prospects in terms of economic collapse, contrary to others like UK, France, uh, United States, uh, Mexico, and others, for example, where the prospects are very bad. So all in all, what I want to say to you is, if you live in Turkey, or if you, if you, if you plan to, uh, to, to move to Turkey, this is a great place, as long as you get along with the people, as long as you respect the local custom, as long as you, you, know, you, you feel part of the community here, which is not always easy, like as everywhere. And um, generally speaking, uh, it is a place where uh, I think is, people are going to, to do better than the rest in the case of economic collapse. It's still going to be tough. You still need to prepare. You still need to read my books. And uh, hopefully they can get out in Turkish one day. And, uh, and certainly I wish you the best because I, it's a country that I really like. And I hope I will be able to come often uh, still in the future before everything collapses, either slowly or very fast. So I hope to be able to be here and have the fantastic uh, Turkish coffee and cuisine. And, and more importantly, meet my friends and very nice people here, which I salute. And, um, and therefore, teşekkür, uh, thank you very much for listening and connect to my YouTube, connect to my Facebook and uh, uh, long live Turkey. Take care.